Hi everyone, welcome to Concept in Medicine. In today's tutorial, we are going to be having a look at the World Health Organization criteria for the diagnosis of diabetes mellitus. We all know that diabetes mellitus is a very common condition in our geographical area. So let's have a look at the criteria. So the WHO criteria has three criteria under it. The first one is the patient having symptoms of hyperglycemia. Which symptoms are we looking at? We are talking about polyphagia, polyuria, polydipsia, unexplained weight loss, lethargy, vaginal trash, etc. Plus, raised venous glucose on a single occasion. That is, we are looking at a fasting blood sugar greater than or equal to 7.0 millimoles per liter or the random blood sugar greater than or equal to 11.1 millimoles per liter. If that is fulfilled, yes, it's conveniently diagnosed as diabetes mellitus. The second criteria is raised venous glucose on two separate occasions. That is the fasting blood sugar greater than or equal to 7.0 millimoles per liter or the oral glucose tolerance test, two hour glucose, that is synonymous to the random blood sugar, greater than or equal to 11.1 millimole per liter. If it is so, yes, you can conveniently diagnose diabetes mellitus. And finally, is the glycated hemoglobin, that is HbA1c. If greater than or equal to 6.5% or greater than or equal to 48 millimole per mole, Yes, it's also diagnostic of diabetes mellitus. In the exception of type 1 diabetes mellitus, children less than 7 months of age, hemoglobinopathies, and pregnancy. Now let's take the first one, diabetes mellitus type 1. For type 1 DM, due to insulin deficiency, there is always going to be high level of glucose. So what does that mean? At all times you have more glucose bounded to the HbA1c component of the hemoglobin A1. For children less than 7 months, they are, their circulation is predominated by fetal hemoglobin, meaning there will be few adult hemoglobin. And in that case, should there be more glucose in circulation, you have few adult hemoglobin to which they will bind to. That's the HbA1c, giving you a false negative. In pregnancy, the plasma volume increases by 50% and the red blood cell mass by 20 to 25%, giving you an increase in the level of HbA1c component of the HbA1, meaning that once there's high availability of HbA1c, more glucose will bind to it, giving you a false positive. And in the cases of hemoglobinopathies, you have more HbA1c getting broken down. And once they are broken down, you have a few available for glucose to bind to. And that will give you a false negative. Then the question goes, what is HbA1c? You should know that the HbA1, which is the normal adult hemoglobin, has three subtypes. That is, we have the HbA1a, HbA1b, and HbA1c. And out of these subtypes, it's HbA1c that glucose can bind to. Using irreversible bonds, glucose has a greater affinity for HbA1c than the other component. That is why the HbA1c is used. In hemoglobinopathies, for example, the HbA1c level will decrease because more HbA1 is getting broken down via hemolysis or via other mechanisms. So in that case, it will give in a false negative. Even if the HbA1c is increasing, you will not realize it will rather be going down because the level of the HbA1c is dropping due to what? The hemoglobinopathy or hemolysis. So HbA1c, that's glycated hemoglobin or glycosylated hemoglobin, tells us about the amount of glucose bounded to HbA1c, that's the, the C uh, subtype of the HbA1, at the normal adult hemoglobin, over a period span of 8 to 12 weeks. That will be 2 to 3 months. So simply put, it measures the mean level of glucose in the blood over a period of 8 to 12 weeks. That is 2 to 3 months. I believe we've made a lot of sense out of this. 
Thank you very much for staying through this lesson. Kindly make sure to subscribe, share, comment, like, and also tell me which concept you would like to see in my next video. This is Concept in Medicine. Bye-bye.